Hey everybody, it's Will here. Welcome back to another episode of the Blackboard Intelligence YouTube channel. Hope you guys are all doing well. Today we're going to continue with our on-chain analysis tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about destruction for episode three. Before we get started, just a little housekeeping. So first of all, I just wanted to mention that if you hear you know, my voice sounding kind of nasally, uh, I am sick. So just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, but I'm powering through to, to get this video off for you guys. Um, other thing, would really appreciate if you could hit the like, uh, subscribe button, as well as just leave any feedback you have. You know, honest feedback is always really appreciated. Uh, one big thing I saw uh, in the comments from last video was that you wanted me to move the uh, camera to the upper left-hand side of the screen from the upper right-hand side. Uh, so I did that. Hope you guys are, are happy with me for, for doing so. Um, but yeah, other than that, um, let me know other metrics you'd like to see covered. Uh, obviously, this is an on-chain analysis series, but I'm happy to do another one like that's derivatives oriented or even price action. So cool. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, talking about destruction. Destruction and Coindesk Destroyed are both very, um, you know, key kind of uh, building block foundational uh, concepts to understand in, in the term in the in the world of on-chain analysis. You know, there's a lot of macro indicators or oscillators that are built off of these metrics, but to understand those, which we'll dive into in future episodes, uh, we do need to first cover what is destruction, what is Coindesk Destroyed, and what is dormancy. So what is Coindesk Destroyed? Coindesk Destroyed, or CDD, is the number of Bitcoin spent multiplied by the amount of time that has transpired since those coins were last moved. So an example, I think uh, using examples can kind of help understand, like help you understand the, this concept the, the easiest. Um, the first example is one Bitcoin is held in a wallet for 10 days. So now 10 coin days have been created because you multiply one BTC times the amount of days that those coins have been in the wallet. So now we have 10 coin days that are being created because we're multiplying one BTC times 10 days that they've been in the wallet. Those coins are now spent. So those, those, uh, the one BTC that sat in the wallet for 10 days is now spent. Uh, 10 coin days are now destroyed because we're doing one BTC times 10 coin days destroyed equals a coin days destroyed value of 10. Our second example, five BTC are held in a wallet for 20 days. 100 coin days have now been created because we multiply those five BTC by the time that all of those coins have been held in the wallet. So we're multiplying five BTC times 20 for the amount of time that they've been in the wallet. That gives us a coin days created value of 100 days. Those coins are then spent. So 100 coin days have now been destroyed. They were previously created. They were then spent. They've now been destroyed. So to do the math for that, we do five BTC times 20 coin days destroyed equals a coin days, coin days destroyed value of 100. So we talked about coin days destroyed, but what is the kind of setback of this? And, and the answer to that is volume. So if we think about it, coin days destroyed is going to be higher in times of higher volume. Coin days destroyed is going to be lower in times of lower volume. Um, and so... To kind of combat that, we can do several things. We can look at other metrics um, oriented from other things, looking at like uh, average spent output lifespan, which looks at the average age of the coins. That'll be looked at in a future video because I don't want to throw too much at you at once. Um, but the other, the other way to combat that is looking at something called dormancy. And what is dormancy? So dormancy is calculated by taking coin days destroyed and dividing that value by transaction volume. So we're just getting the raw value, the non-volume dependent value of destruction because we're eliminating the volume component of that by dividing by. It. Uh, and so again, this eliminates that drawback that Coindays Destroyed has, which is that Coindays Destroyed generally follows volume. Uh, and so again, when we're looking at kind of the age of coins being spent, there are other metrics that we can look at and we'll talk about those in future videos. Um, but for now, we're going to just stick to, um, you know, coin days destroyed oriented metrics uh, and dormancy is the non volume oriented uh, version of coin days destroyed, which gives us this, um, you know, uh, eliminates that drawback as we talked about. So what does destruction mean? So we talked about how to calculate these things. Uh, we talked briefly about what is some of the, the drawbacks of using a coin days destroyed versus dormancy. Uh, but what is this actually telling us? 
So an uptrend to destruction means that older coins, so ideally uh, generally more experienced market participants are selling, they're spending their coins or distributing. Uh, and very similar to long-term holders, we see we generally see destruction rise into strength. Uh, so if you go back and um, by the way, if, if you wanted to look at the video on, on long-term holders, that's our first tutorial video we put out. Uh, you see a very similar pattern between long-term holders and uh, destruction. Um, and the reasoning is just because it's kind of telling you the same thing, just that older coins, aka more experienced market participants are distributing. Uh, the third point here is that we also see one-off spikes in destruction at capitulation bottoms. And we'll look at that in a second when we move on to the actual chart. And then lastly, um, high destruction is bearish because it's telling you there's a large amount of spending from more experienced market participants. Low destruction, however, is neutral because it doesn't account for the demand side of the equation. So it tells you there's a lack of spending, but it doesn't tell you there's an increase in buying, if that makes sense. All right, so now we're looking at coin days destroyed uh, on the actual chart version. So again, as we talked about, you see coin days destroyed trend up in bullish market trends or, or into strength. Uh, and that's because older, more experienced market participants that bought that, you know, are, that were buying down at the bottom of the bear, they're now distributing into that strength. Uh, very similar to what we've seen with uh, what we saw with long term holders. And so you'll see in 2011 on that initial run up, a large increase. Uh, 2013 and the two double pumps um, in 2017, in 2020 to 2021, um, as well, a, a smaller uptick in 2019 as well. Um, and then the red arrows, I'm, I'm really just put there to highlight that you also see, again, you also see this increase um, at capitulation bottoms. So you see 2012, uh, 2014, at the bottom of 2018, which is the you know, most distinct one. Uh, and then 2020, COVID bottom, and then as well at the bottom of uh, this kind of mini summer bear market in 2021, uh, at the bottom of call it like late July to, to early August. Now we're looking at dormancy. So with dormancy, we see the same trend pretty much. Um, you know, again, it's just the adjusted version for, for volume. So again, increased spending into strength, uh, decreased spending into weakness. And then we do see these kind of one-off spikes at capitulation bottoms as well. But generally we wanna be looking at what's the trend, right? These are these one-off spikes, but overall we wanna watch for what's the general, like the, the kind of macro trend, right? The macro trend from 2014 to the you know, 2015, 2016 bottom is down, right? The trend from call it 2016 to you know, 2018 is up. The trend from you know, 2020 to 2021 is up. So in conclusion, uh, to kind of wrap this all up, high destruction shows that older coins, which are generally more experienced mark participants are being spent. High destruction equals bearish. Low destruction equals neutral because it doesn't account for demand. It just shows that there's a lack of spending. And then lastly, there are many metrics created from destruction. This is just looking at the basics. Uh, and so in future videos, we'll use this video as kind of a foundational building block to build off of when we start talking about some of these other broader, more, more sophisticated indicators that are built off of uh, destruction. So really appreciate you guys uh, taking the time to watch the video. Hope you got something out of it. And uh, yeah, would really appreciate like, subscribe. Uh, let me know any other metrics that you'd like to see covered moving forward. Uh, hope you guys have a great day and uh, take it easy. Bye-bye.